Hey Geeks, um, I had some requests about some Blizzard Entertainment games. Um, so today I'm going to be discussing with a, a friend of mine, um, Despaired, who also is an uh, avid World of Warcraft player. I kind of retired from it, uh, but I'm still going to provide the content for you guys anyways. All the uh, video that you will see is um, per, uh, Despaired has given me permission to use his footage. And then you're going to hear me kind of like interview him and we're going to talk about mostly just focusing on garrisons today with the Warlord to Drain Air patch. So uh, we're going to hop in just a second and uh, hope you enjoy. All right, Sparity, we're ready. So uh, I briefed everyone what we're talking about, Warlord's Drainer and the garrison system. And so um, I'm going to let you show us what we're doing and then tell me like how it works and what you know it's useful for. Okay. Uh, the garrison is, uh, it's a system that Blizzard has implemented in the new World of Warcraft, uh, expansion for Warlords of Draenor, and, uh, it's integral to the storyline. Um, you really can't avoid it, you'll pick it up as you start doing your questing. Um, but, I, I don't know, I find it to be a really fun and engaging way of playing the game. Uh, effectively, what ends up happening is um, you need to construct uh, a garrison because when you enter Warlords of Draenor, you take out the Dark Portal, and there's really no way for you to easily move back and forth between here and Azeroth. Um, so you're tasked with building a garrison and raising an army to fight all of the baddies that are out in the expansion. Um, moving into... And there might be a little bit of delay, so I apologize. But moving into the uh, the garrison here, uh, this is a level three garrison. Um, there are three ranks that you get, and uh, you upgrade them as you go. You have to be a particular level to upgrade them, and you can only make the level three when you hit 100. Oh, so your um, max garrison as far as the aesthetics look? Uh, well, the exterior, yes, the whole okay. stone motif and all that. Like I have a level three town hall. Uh, that you'll see shortly. Um, and the idea is that uh, you... This kind of goes back to Warcraft 3 style. So you have full control over your... Um, the way that you construct your garrison. There's some, it, A lot of it is preset, but then you also... Um, like, you can build it how you like, so... Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, going into the garrison or into the town hall here, I'll show you some things. Uh, um, you have effectively two tables here. You can uh, you can go over to your mission table, which is this one here, and I use some mods for this, but okay. I don't know how it works. And it'll show you available missions. Part of uh, the way that the the uh, the garrison works is as you're out in the world and you're questing, you'll run across uh, an NPC or something like that. There'll be a quest. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, you were super awesome. Hey, can I join your garrison? And you say, sure. And then they become a follower. You can use followers for a number of things, um, mainly like these missions here. So they'll use some rewards on the side. So like for pool. Um, okay. I see, see it. You get XP there, bonus XP. Yeah, well, the XP is followers, because the followers themselves level up. There's also uh, loot, there's some gold there, so like you could do missions, and the, when the followers successfully complete it, they'll give you gold. That percentage that's next to them uh, shows you uh, like what your chance is of success, and you can affect that by countering the abilities in there. Yeah, they give you a pretty good tutorial and make it pretty straightforward. So in okay. this, here, um, th this particular quest they're going to do is uh, for Black Rock Weaponry, and that gives me an item that I can upgrade my followers' item level, and they will be more successful. Uh, in the upper left there, you can see that uh, this quest requires a follower with an item level of 15. So if you look over on the, uh, the followers there to the left-hand column, you'll, you'll see their particular item at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, and if I click on a follower, for example, which you'll see momentarily, 
Um, you'll see that they have a particular item level of weapon. It, they make it really basic. So you have an item level of weapon and an item level of armor. And you can either give them a particular item level. So that's what this quest is for, for a piece of armor that just gives them a 630 item level weapon. Or you can get, like, scraps that let you upgrade, like, three ranks at a time. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, this particular follower, for example, has, uh, they count, you can see that they counter, um, the, uh, the threat counter, or I'm sorry, the, the magic debuff and, uh, dead, uh, minion swarm. So, when you're doing a mission, um, this follower will negate, will successfully counter those abilities and raise your percentage chance by that amount. But it also says here that they're an orc slayer, a brew aficionado, and a, a fast learner. So that means that those are other traits that you have. So if I partner this particular follower with a Pandaren, they're going to have an increased chance of success. Ah. If the mission that I'm doing happens to be to kill an orc, then I'll have an increased chance of success. And then the fast learner trait makes it so that she gains XP faster. Um, cool. Although that isn't really a handy thing at this point because she's at already max level. Yeah. The followers... <laughs> They level up, so they start at whatever level it is that you get them. Some of them start at 90, or, you know, you can find ones 92, 95, 100. You know, as you're leveling, you'll depending on what zone you find them in, determines what level they are. But as they do missions, they can experience points, and that's what all those XP missions are for. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, the idea is that you level them up as they go. When they hit 100, then you can raise their quality. As you'll see that this one here is an epic quality follower. Yeah, with the purple. They start off okay. as... Yeah. They start off as a green quality follower, and they only have one of these abilities here, rather than two. Um, and then as you raise them up... then they, I think they only have, like, uh, two traits versus one trait. But when they hit blue, they get an extra trait, and when they hit epic, they get an extra ability. Oh, cool. Um, and so you can, like, still level them even after they hit 100, which is kind of cool. The other interesting thing about it is that as you pick up a follower, they have a chance to critical. So a follower that would normally be green, if you critical it, could end up being an epic right off the bat. And then you just need to level them to 100, or they could be a blue off the bat. So, kind of cool. Oh, okay. But anyway, to to do a mission, so I'm going to go in here and pick this um, one for Blackrock Rep Weaponry. Um, and my mod automatically picks that. So if I put these guys in here, I have 100% chance because I picked Shelly Hamby and Chowner's two abilities. And then I also have Delira Moonfang and uh, Ragnari Shell. Both of those have Orc Slayer talents, so they get a, bon a benefit from that. And uh, like the combination of those things makes it so that um, I will have a 100% success chance. And you should see all that there in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I see the 100% chance on the, the treasure chest thing. Yeah. So that just shows you that... Uh, now, the other things of note here is that this particular mission is going to take eight hours to complete, which you'll see in the upper left there. So, yeah. And then I just hit start, and off they go. And when they finish, they'll come back and they'll um, give me an item to upgrade one of my followers. But there's other things, though, too. So, like, like for example, there's uh, there was this one here for a set of shoulders. They can actually bring loot to your character, too. So oh, they wow. can complete the mission successfully. Yeah, and some of these can be really good because you can end up getting, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, raid quality loot. Oh, so okay. They always just give you one rank higher, or you have the ability to get up to one rank higher than what you're currently doing in content. And I don't know how Blizzard knows it, but they just do. Cool. So, let me just turn some of these in here real quick. Okay, so uh, other things of note. Um, followers can also be used for uh, being assigned to building. Okay. So, for example, um, 
Well, I should talk a little bit more about the buildings and stuff. So over here is the uh, your garrison's architect table. And you use this to construct your um, your garrison, and you put on plots. Depending on the size of the garrison and the rank, determines the number of plots. This is a maximum plot uh, garrison that you'll see here shortly. And I see like there's like some that are still locked for you, like that top top corner one or whatever. Yeah, um, I haven't done the quest to unlock those. So the garrison comes with three buildings that are already, um, like they're pre, I'm sorry, four buildings that are prefabricated. So the the um, excavation, essentially you're in garrison mine, your herb garden, uh, the fishing shack, and the pet menagerie. Um, all four of those are, uh, they come stock standard with the uh, garrison. So like you just need to do a quest to unlock them. I'm not into pet battles, so I don't really open up my pet men uh, menagerie. Oh, okay. Fishing is fishing. I keep that on my main, so. Um, but the other buildings you build, the buildings can offer you all kinds of different uh, benefits and things like that. So um, if we look at, uh, let's say, for example, this barn here, uh, the barn has several things depending on the rank. When you first build the barn, it allows you to capture particular animals for leatherworking and tailoring uh, 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 materials. So when you're crafting, um, it, it saves you time from having to go out and skin things because they can come can give you like a stack of leather that you can use for leatherworking. Oh, nice. Uh, when you, you'll see it says from level 2, allows you to, to capture beasts that, that will instead give you feasts. So the feast system is kind of gone. Now you just find somebody with a barn and they just craft all day long. And then level three allows you to capture versions of both types of animals. And uh, when, you, when you capture these elite ones, you have a chance to get savage blood, which is a rare crafting material uh, used for a lot of stuff in this expansion. Okay. Um, so you can, on this, even after you've finished constructing, so like this barn is already done, um, you can change positions with something else and move them around as you see fit, as long as it's another equally sized plot. The barn is a medium sized building, so you only have two medium plots, so you can really only change it two different spots on the map. Um, so what we'll do here is I'm going to upgrade a building so that you can see, so I'm going to do uh, I think we're going to do an upgrade for the uh, enchanter study here okay so to do that I need a pattern which we talk to this little gnome that's to the side here I need to find it Hmm. I don't have enough gold for that. Well, maybe I won't be doing that. <laughs> so your um, your gold I I... is not separate. Like so, like the garrison doesn't have its own gold. It's actually your character's gold. Well, it uses two different currencies. So if you look at this here, um, you can see that it requires 100 garrison resources and 300 gold. So garrison resources you get per day. Um, they're available just outside. Well, there's a number of ways to get them. Uh, you can do quests, you can pick up items, there's um, some buildings give it to you. So right now I have enough garrison resources, but I don't have enough gold to actually do it. Oh, okay. But I, I do have a building that I've already upgraded. Some of those patterns are not available for purchase either until you do a particular achievement to unlock them. Oh, okay. So, right now I've finished constructing my Dwarven Bunker level 3. So, um, once you start construction, it takes an hour, and then you come back, and then you can finalize your garrison plot, so... Does it go into, like, a little cutscene when it's being built, or...? No, nah, what it completes, it's just more of a fanfare type thing to show you. 
Oh, so this one's upgrading that you got going right there. Okay. Yeah, that one. Well, it's done. That's why it's flashing. Oh, okay. So anyway, I'm going to uh, run out to the person here, and then I'm gonna. And I've finished constructing this particular building. Um, this building, for example, uh, the reason I built a level three is because, let's see, one, you have the ability to get armor scraps when you okay. kill monsters in the world. The armor scraps let you um, buy transmogrification uh, or, you know, cosmetic things for your character. Um, the rank two lets you turn in work orders uh, for the cost is resources, and what you get out of it is you can get follower weapon upgrades. Okay. Which is handy. And then the rank three, which is what I have here, is um, it lets you pick up a, a twisted seal of fate. So right now I'm going to uh, talk to this MPD and re requisition my seal for the week. They give me one free seal. This kind of Kind of ties into the whole thing. This race with Miss of Pandaria, they added these items that allow you a bonus roll on a boss when you kill it in a raid. Oh yeah, yeah, and, I remember uh, those. Yeah. Well, in this case, um, this building will give me one of my allotment of three per, uh, for free per week. Oh, nice. Uh, because otherwise, you have to. They change the way that you purchase them now. You have to either spend uh, gold. Apexa shards, garrison resources, or honor to buy them, and they increase. The, they really want to diversify what you're doing in the game, so they have a stacking cost if you try to buy the the seals uh, using the same currency. So, in other words, since you can only get three per week, um, let's just say that you use gold to buy your seals. Cost you 500 gold for the seal. A thousand gold if you buy a second one using gold, and it'll cost you two thousand for the third one if you try to buy it with gold again. Oh, okay. So, but they, but if you diversify how you're spending it, so it's like only five hundred honor for one. So I could buy one for five hundred gold, and then buy one for five hundred honor. See what I mean? And yeah. Then you can get everything for a lot cheaper. And it, this building negates the need to buy one of those three, so I get one for free every week. That's nice. Yep. Um, some other interesting things you can do. So there's two other types of things. Um, w with these, you can uh, you can assign a follower to a building, and that increases the work order production output. Um, I should touch base on that a little bit uh, most buildings have a order system where you you take a material or item and you essentially trade it to them um, and then uh, after a four hour span they convert into something else okay and the the idea with that is used for crafting materials or other things that might be useful so um like, for example, if you're a leather worker, the items you use to actually make your leather working pieces are called burnished leather. You can't just make them or harvest them. You have to actually get them as a work order from your building. So you can go out and skin things in the world and get raw leather, but then you have to process it into a type of leather that you can use for crafting. So oh, okay. Um, that's kind of how the system works. But anyway, um, so if we look back at these buildings, you can assign a follower to a building, and that increases the work order output. So instead of getting like one piece of leather from a building for the four-hour time span, you can assign a follower who has a particular trait needed to work in that building. So for example, this guy here, Gold Mane, is a skinner, and that means that he can work in the barn. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I can assign him to the barn, and now when I go to pick up my uh, feasts that that produces with its work orders, I now get two feasts for every one that is produced. Ah, cool. Um, the other type of thing you can do with your followers, some followers have a uh, the bodyguard trait, 
like for example Ilona here or Ilona um, has a bodyguard trait and that means it can assign her to the barracks okay and this allows you to uh, it means that she's going to be standing in front of my barracks now and I can talk to her and she will become my bodyguard and I can take her out into the world oh wow and she is a, a protection paladin, so she will spam taunt for me um, and fight mobs anytime I engage them. Now, does she help in, say, like, a PvP situation? Uh, they cannot follow you into Battlegrounds, but they can work in world PvP. Okay. So yes. Okay. Uh, the... It, interesting thing with bodyguards is that you can uh, rank them up. So if I talk to her here, you'll see a little reputation bar at the top here. Mm -hmm. When you kill monsters, you gain reputation with them. Uh, if you have them as your active guard. And uh, what it does is um, when they hit rank 2, they gain some extra abilities. Um, I'm not sure what hers is going to be. Maybe she'll gain lay on hands or something like that. Okay. Um, and when they hit rank 3, all of them have a special and unique ability for how they operate. So, um, the unique abilities are like, I have one uh, bodyguard that allows you to check your missions by talking to them anywhere in the world. So you don't have to come back to your garrison and check your mission. Or wow. you could have another one that acts as a portable mailbox. So when you talk to them, they, they can deliver you mail. Or... Uh, there's a death knight one that gives uh, he'll summon a death gate that allows you to portal back to your garrison anytime you want <laughs> nice so it is kind of interesting uh, the way these follows work not quite like Star Wars Galaxies or uh, Star Wars Duel Republic rather yeah but similar oh okay so it's fun but anyway that's I think that's pretty much everything for the garrison here uh, at cool. least for right now. Yeah, and like I said, we'll um, come back with you and we'll do more. Um, maybe I'll, I'll join in on one of your raid days and just kind of... I know you probably won't be able to talk too much while you're raiding, but at least I can give people an idea of the mechanics and stuff that go on in the current content. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for watching. Oh yeah, thanks for letting me watch your videos. All right, thanks, geeks, for letting me. That's it was an overview of the garrison. Um, I'd like to thank the disparity. I will provide his Twitch channel if you would like to uh, watch his streams. He does do a lot of World of Warcraft stuff. So um, thanks, geeks. Uh, you're totally awesome, and we will see you next week or sometime at a later week when we post more videos.